This is the Aeon Center. Only a few years after it was built in 1973, people began to notice something alarming. The same marble facade that gave the tower its iconic and elegant look was raining debris on the ground below, threatening safety in one of the busiest places in one of the busiest cities in the world. The issue arose from key architectural choices in constructing the former Standard Oil Building, once the fourth tallest in the world. But how was this facade even allowed in the first place, and what was done to fix this catastrophe? Buildcore recently traveled to Chicago to see the building that changed skyscraper design forever. Why use marble on a skyscraper? Well, Carrara marble has a stellar reputation. Quarried in Italy since Roman times, it's been famously used on the Pantheon in Michelangelo's David. It's brilliantly white and has that aura of permanence. Architect Edward Durrell Stone believed it would give Chicago's new skyscraper a sense of prestige. Stone famously told the company that thin Carrara marble slabs would be long-lasting and outstanding on the facade. The plan was grand. Import multiple thousand tons of Carrara marble and cut it into 50 by 44 inch panels just one and a quarter inches thick. In total, some 43,000 panels were hung on the building's steel frame. The effect was stunning, a pure white pinstripe tower gleaming in the Chicago sun. For a moment, it seemed like an architectural masterpiece. But here's the catch. This marble was much thinner than any used on previous buildings. In most construction, stone panels are several inches thick. At one and a quarter inches, these slabs were a bit of a gamble, one that the architects felt was worth taking for the iconic look. Chicago is famous for its windy city reputation, but it also undergoes some serious temperature swings throughout the year. In summer, the facade bakes in 90 plus degree sun, and in winter, the temperature can drop into the double digit negatives with bitter winds. That turns out to be terrible for thin marble. Every material expands when heated and contracts when cold. But marble's behavior is tricky. Carrara marble is mostly made up of calcite, and its crystals don't all expand together. In fact, geologists later found that when Carrara marble heats up, it can expand in one direction and contract in another because of its crystal structure. Then, it can't snap back perfectly when it cools. It's like bending a paperclip just a little each time. Eventually, it stays bent. So picture this, the steel frame and marble panels are locked together. On a hot day, everything expands slightly. On a cold day, it shrinks. But because the marble expands and contracts unevenly, each heating and cooling cycle leaves tiny stresses in the stone. Over many cycles, those stresses add up, and this is known as thermal cycling. Over the years, this thermal cycling caused the marble to permanently bow outward from the building. Tests in the 1980s showed the marble had lost about 40% of its strength from this repeated warping, but more on that in a minute. Marble is a brittle material that cracks rather than bends, so once a crack starts, it tends to propagate. The repeated stress would make microscopic cracks that then widen. Winter brought another enemy, water. When snow or rain seeps into tiny cracks and then freezes, the ice expands by around 9%. That little expansion can force cracks wider, kind of like potholes or splits on the road during the cold season. Chicago winters meant this happened every year, further prying the marble apart. It's a perfect storm. Very thin stone, alternating heat and cold, water infiltration, and a brittle nature. No surprise why bad things started to happen. These theoretical issues showed up in practice very quickly. Even during construction, in December 1973, a 350-pound marble slab detached from the facade and crashed into the roof of a nearby building. Thankfully, it was Christmas Day and the roof was empty, but that four-foot-tall slab showed signs of what was to come. By the late 1970s, inspectors were finding more problems. During detailed checks, they discovered widespread cracking and bowing. For a white facade that was supposed to look pristine, it was shameful. To illustrate, imagine each panel as a rigid tile. When it bows even a bit, it creates gaps at the edges and stress in the stone. Over time, these areas would flake or snap. People began noticing falling debris, chunks and flakes of marble hitting the sidewalks below. That's extremely dangerous in a busy city, as even a tiny piece of marble falling a thousand feet could cause some serious issues. The incidence of falling marble became a public concern. Temporary fixes were tried, crews bolted stainless steel straps around the panels to hold them on, but that was only a stopgap. Meanwhile, the clock was ticking. Each day in the Windy City exposed these slabs to 100 plus mile per hour gusts at the top floor, and each Chicago winter inflicted more freeze thaw damage. The building's owners, which was by now Amico Oil, realized that this marble envelope wasn't just a temporary headache. It was a growing disaster. They needed a plan B and a big one. By the late 1980s, it became painfully clear to everyone involved that the original facade was fundamentally flawed. 
engineers found that wind loads the building was experiencing were about 20% higher than code required. In other words, the marble was fighting wind stronger than expected and losing strength from aging. The 1985 analysis showed the marble had about 40% less strength than it started with and was expected to lose another 30% in the next decade. The only viable solution was to remove and replace every panel. This meant the building's skin had to be completely replaced while people still work inside every day. For the Amico building, this was the situation from 1990 to 1992. The building was still home to offices, a hotel, and right across from Millennium Park, one of Chicago's busiest attractions. Every day during the recladding, crews had to deal with extremely high wind gusts, specialized suspended scaffolding that caused persistent delays, and heavier replacement panels. But what material could match the original look, yet survive Chicago's climate? The answer was another white stone, but a very different one. Granite, and more specifically Mount Airy White Granite from North Carolina. Why white granite? First, it represents Carrara marble in color, so the building could keep its signature bright look. But granite is an igneous rock, much harder and tougher than marble. Mount Airy granite has tiny black speckles, but reads as crisp white from afar. Importantly, it has very low thermal expansion and is far more crack resistant. Using granite meant some changes. The new panels were made thicker and each had a beefier anchor bracket. Engineers redesigned the connections holding the panels to the frame. All this added weight also meant that many of the building's below grade columns needed reinforced. All told, the new granite facade looks almost identical to the old marble from a distance. Those long vertical ribs in white color are the same. One by one, over three years, the marble was removed and the granite replaced it. When it was done, not a single slab of marble remained on the tower. The cost? Over 80 million in early 90s dollars, or just short of 200 million dollars today. To recoup its costs, Amico sued all parties involved both the tower's architects, the general contractor, the firm that installed the marble, and even the Italian marble supplier. The parties ended up settling out of court, with the results kept confidential. So what did the Aeon Center teach the world of architects and engineers? First, material science matters more than aesthetics. Nowadays, codes and best practices require mock-ups and weather testing for new facade materials, especially in extreme climates. You won't see builders slapping one-inch marble on a new skyscraper anymore at least not without extensive analysis. Second, the importance of thermal expansion matching. This failure highlighted how different parts of a facade, between stone, anchors, and frame, must expand and contract together. Modern designs often include slip joints or thermal breaks, so panels can move without issue. Granite might have a uniform look like marble, but it's fundamentally tougher. After the Aeon Center, other projects took note. For example, Toronto's first Canadian place, which was in part designed by the same architect as the Aeon Center, switched from Carrara marble to glass in 2009 after similar issues. Regarding the leftover 5,900 tons of marble, two-thirds was crushed for landscaping at Amico's Indiana Refinery, and the other portion was half donated to Governor's State University and half used for carving into corporate gifts and mementos. In the end, the Aeon Center, now clad in granite, still stands tall in the Chicago skyline. It's the same clean line tower it's always been, just with a safer coat. In a quiet way, this building's trouble facade changed skyscraper engineering forever. At Billcore, we're building America, one story at a time. We cover some of the most impressive and headline-grabbing projects and topics across this great country, and with your help, the channel has grown to over 45,000 subscribers and reached millions and millions of people. With that being said, thank you, and I'll see you next time.